So I'm Eric Skokan. I'm the owner of uh, Black Hat Farm just outside of uh, Boulder. My wife, Jill, and I, we farm 130 acres. Um, the lion's share of what we grow goes to our two restaurants, um, uh, the Black Cat and Bramble and Hare, which are both in, in Boulder. I've been a chef for 23 years, and uh, you know, at some point I got tired of uh, buying really mediocre produce and uh, serving meat that you know didn't feel good to serve uh, to all the guests in my restaurant. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and uh, um, start a farm. So now we're, we're at 130 acres and we grow the vast majority of everything that you see in the restaurant. The things that you see here um, are all varieties that, um, uh, that do well in cold weather. It's really you know, amazing that in a place that's totally desolate and cold, uh, that you can get something that tastes so amazingly alive uh, coming out of the fields. And so we'll, we come out here, brush the snow off of the, off of the beds uh, with big uh, push brooms, uh, and then we're, you know, in our snowsuits on hands and knees, we harvest all of these greens uh, from underneath the row covers and then, uh, you know, we run them into the restaurant and it's like they're alive. And it's the greatest thing in the, you know, in the world. We grow 250 varieties of, of vegetables. We grow things, you know, we, everything that's possible to grow to supply to the restaurant. We, we try to grow it, you know. We, uh, we grew sesame seeds over there, garbanzo beans over there, you know, 22 types of heirloom tomatoes, 14 types of carrots. Uh, you know, we do it all and then rotating everything um, and, then, and balancing the needs of the soil with the needs of the restaurants, with the needs of our guests, making sure everything is healthy and delicious, you know, like that. It's a, it's a huge balancing act, you know, what we, what we are able to accomplish on any, uh, you know, on any given week, any given day is, uh, you know, is pretty amazing. I'm pretty proud. kitchen, uh, I like to focus on dishes that are flexible enough to be able to uh, bring in all the different parts uh, from the farm because uh, the, the harvest that we have coming from the farm, it changes pretty much every day. Uh, so a lot of the recipes here are really uh, focused on great technique and then we put our great in ingredients in on top of that and uh, it yields great dishes. I don't like doing dishes that have um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of frill to them. Frill is uh, hard to grow at the farm, and uh, and often it doesn't, uh, you know, kind of distracts from the, the great flavor of the dishes. So I really focus in on um, uh, treating our great in ingredients with a lot of respect and uh, making the thing taste like a great version of itself, and really uh, nothing more. So in this dish, um, I have um, a pork loin from. Uh, from the hogs that we raise uh, that I'll roast. All right, so the first step with, uh, with cooking pork or really with any sort of meat is seasoning. And I'll season it lightly with salt on both sides. I'll put it uh, fat side down first so I can render the fat out and that makes a, a really nice crust. All right, so next step is, uh, is browning off the turnips. I've swirled a little bit of butter in and then in go the turnips. So I'll leave those to brown for uh, just a minute. So while the turnips are cooking, it's time to uh, uh, take care of this frisee. 
Um, I, I could cook it uh, as whole little heads, um, uh, but I prefer to break it up into, into smaller pieces. Um, so I gather the frise together, cut the roots off. So now with just a little, uh, a little fluff, um, it's all set. All right, so we'll set these aside and take a look at our turnips. Those should be ready now. So they've picked up a little bit of color, uh, which is great. I'll throw in a handful of onion. Uh, the turnips and the onions are just about done. In goes the, uh, the thyme, uh, a wee splash of wine. I'll give it a little toss and we'll take a look at this pork loin and see how it's doing. Oh, that's looking pretty good. I'll set it into the oven. So I'm gonna throw in a little bundle of thyme, a sachet, and throw in some butter as well. And once the butter melts, I'll start basting the pork with it. So just like that. And this is my favorite thing to do in the whole world, uh, uh, basting with this uh, fresh thyme and butter. It smells so good. Now I'll slide the whole, uh, the whole thing off onto a tray to let it rest. All right, so now in the pan, I, I'm going to use the, um, the crusty part that's left in the pan, uh, which has a lot of great flavor. Uh, that'll be the base of, of, of a quick sauce. And that sauce goes like this. Um, a little bit of onion, butter, and some mustard. And that's regular Dijon mustard, uh, uh, which I love. I think it's, uh, it's great uh, in the winter and it marries so well with the flavor of pork. Splash of wine. In this pot, I've reduced um, uh, the stock from the bones of the pork uh, with some wine. Uh, just reduced it all the way down and it's uh, nice and syrupy. We'll add a bit of that. Swirl everything together. I have the uh, turnips that we browned off earlier. Um, uh, they're uh, nice and hot. I'll throw a big handful of uh, frise in. Give it, a, give it a nice stir, and you'll hear it, hear it crackle, um, which is a really fun sound, uh, and it smells really wonderful as well. So additionally, I've taken the, the drippings from our pork roast, and I've added them in uh, as well, kind of tossed everything together, um, trying to capture all the, little, all the little bits of love that have come off of the pork loin. I'll throw in a big spoonful of roasted shallots, as well and let those uh, cook in. And now it's time to cut our pork loin. I'm a big fan of uh, slicing things thinly. It takes a little, little bit of extra time, but it's totally worth it. So lastly, we put it on the plate and serve it up. Oh, it smells so good.